21 goals in a row from the Dogs delivers a massive finals curveball. Have the Cats discovered a September X Factor and Melbourne's embarrassing season reaches new lows. This is a round so far presented by Kale and Kane Corns. An extraordinary night at Marvel Stadium. It is our big story. The Bombers kicked the first goal of the game. They then had to watch a procession from the Dogs. And the Dogs run out winners, 100 points, the first team this year. Yeah, well, the first quarter was unbelievable when you look at the numbers. As you said, Dylan Shield kicked the first goal with 18 seconds into the game. They've now lost by a combined 173 points in the last two weeks, the Bombers. And what's that done to their percentage? We'll talk about that and the ramifications shortly. But this was the story. Dogs were just all over them. They were hungry. Their skill and their quickness by hand and foot was amazing. It's this sort of stuff here that leads to the Dixon goal, which I was really impressed with. They got a good core group of young players who all stood up tonight. So the future looks good at the Western Bulldogs. But those numbers in the first quarter, plus 16 in ground ball gets, 17 in contested possessions, and 43 in general disposals. It was game over at quarter time, and... Gee, Essendon have got some big questions to answer. We haven't seen that de defence make be made to look a mess for that long. It was a bit alarming tonight, wasn't it, with the way the dogs and how easy they were able to move the footy? Yeah, well, when you kick 21 goals in a row, I know, it's the, same, the, the, obvious, the but... ease of which they came, I think the review for Essendon will be horrific. And what that does for their chances to play finals, do they deserve to play finals? Not on a performance like that. I, you know, John Warsold sitting there on the bench showing no emotion whatsoever. Yeah. He wasn't coaching tonight. He was just sitting there and watching a training drill against his side. So I was a bit disappointed I didn't see some fire from, from him at quarter time and three-quarter time. And whilst he was on the bench, because he just sat there and copped it, as most of the Essendon players did, I know they had a lot of players out. I know they made six changes. But the Dogs had a couple out Absolutely. as well. And there's a yep. lot of teams across the competition. That was just a lack of effort. It was embarrassing. And on the back of that, there's no way you can think they play finals this year. And it was interesting to see Dylan Sheil actually address the team at quarter time, not the skipper. Dyson Hebel. As for the dogs, we thought Marcus Bontempelli was a man you'd always tag, but Josh Dunkley is coming with the bolt. His last five weeks has been extraordinary and went to new heights tonight. Yeah, well, this is what I mean about the, the numbers through the midfield. Our hunters in there. McRae had 39 tonight. They went to tag him. Bontempelli's been in Brownlow medal form. And Dunkley's performance tonight, he had 16 in the first quarter with five clearances. That 11 contested. I mean, he had 30 just on half time, basically ended up with a career high 39 disposals and 22 of those contested, kicked a goal and maybe not the most polished by foot, so maybe he is the one that does escape the, the attention of the class of McRae and Bontempelli, but gee, they found one. He's that new age midfielder, he's got the big body, he's hard, he loves it in tight and you know, this sort of stuff here where he tackles Shield and gets the turnover, that's what they love about him. And, you know, he's not out of the question to make a late run for all Australian squad because he's averaging 29 on the year and certainly worthy of that squad of 40. Don't think he makes a 22, yep. but had a, an amazing year. Absolutely. Before tonight, the Bombers were sitting comfortable inside the top eight, two games clear. It all changes after that result. They've lost a massive amount of percentage, a 14% swing tonight with the Dogs after that result. If Fremantle can beat St Kilda tomorrow, the Dockers then face the Bombers next week. They could jump the Bombers in a matter of weeks. Yeah, and you look at that as well. So do, do Essendon make it? They've got to win at least one out of those next two. You're not sure they do if you're looking at their Port Adelaide. They were terrific today. Massive game next week against a pretty ordinary North Melbourne side tonight. We'll get to that. And then Fremantle at home. And for Adelaide, they probably cop a percentage building tomorrow, you would think. They're already yeah. out of it. But then Collingwood and Western Bulldogs, genuine 50-50. So Bulldogs right in the hunt there. Don't think Hawthorne or the Dockers can make it. All right, that game today, speaking of uh, results, Collingwood, they keep themselves in the top four hunt with that big win over the Demons. They were forced into a new look attack and it paid dividends. I really like it. I'm always spoken on this show a lot about when Mason Cox has been there, how predictable Collingwood have been. Like, even in a couple of their wins, they just long bomb top of the goal square and the opposition know exactly where it's going. But, but this setup here with Majek playing is that key target. He kicked four and then surrounded by a class around him. Like Elliot's been moving well the last couple of weeks. You've got Varko down there, Hoskin Elliott's been able to hit the scoreboard. Side bottoms playing pl closer to goal and then the goalie and Stevenson will come back. The wild card for me is Darcy Moore. Uh, I know they tried rough head down there today. I think when Darcy Moore comes back, he's the one that goes forward yep. with my check and Dugowie there. He's done it before. He's a target. He can, can take a contested grab. Rough head goes back. 
And that's a pretty threatening setup as well, particularly when Stevenson comes back. It was handy today having Ruffhead as the second ruckman, so they lose that with Cox and only a focal point in attack, but the second ruck is also an option. Yeah, it is. I don't think it's a big one for me because Grundy yeah. rucks for 90, yeah. 90 Five percent of the game, so you know you can have a, a, a smaller ruckman just go in there to give him a quick rest. All right, the demons on this uh, side of the the things today for them is this as bad as it gets now? I think they're the second last are going to finish well down the ladder from what we expected. This is a massive alarm. Well, it is. It's just they're, they're just an irrelevant football club, Melbourne. I mean, if you look at it, there's 16 teams in this competition who turn up every week, and you think, well, they can win, and you're not surprised if 16 teams turn up and win, but. Gold Coast and Melbourne are probably the two where you don't give any chance when they turn up. So that is how far this team has slipped. And it's, it's unbelievable when you look at the media landscape and the scrutiny some of the coaches have been under this year. Chris Scott's been under more scrutiny yep. than Simon Goodwin. Ken Hinckley's eighth. And he's been under more scrutiny than Simon Goodwin. Don Pike's the same at Adelaide. He's in ninth. And there's been some, you know, Ross Lyons the same. Why is the scrutiny escaping Simon Goodwin? I know probably you're going to say because he signed that three-year contract yep. extension. But... Melbourne just don't know where they're at. And to go and get Stephen May and give up pick six, who is Ben King at the Gold Coast, who's going to be a great young key forward for a long time, which they need, Melbourne. They don't have one. They go and get a 27-year-old on a five-year deal who's let them down. We'll get to him in a moment. To give up two first-round draft picks for Jake Lever. This is a club that just does not know where they are at. And if Simon Goodwin was out of contract, his performance this year, with all the class he's got in that side, I mean, Champion Data had him the number one list yep. in, the, in the game. Now, they're not... They're not mugs, they're not fools, they're not getting it wrong that badly. So something is going seriously wrong at Melbourne and you have to look at the coach for that. And Goodwin, he continues to throw the magnets around Hunt, Fritch, Petty, Harms, Jones, they've all been thrown around. The latest one today was Oscar McDonald. He played forward, which is just strange, really. Yeah, he's, he's a defender who's barely in that side. He was thrown forward because he had no other options. It's like almost like a rebuilding club. Yeah. They're just trying to throw the magnets around at the last point of the year. So no club is under more pressure and no coach next year than Simon Goodman. Talk about Stephen May. Another hamstring, the same side. His season is all but done now. How much of a letdown is this? Just only a handful of games this year in his first year at the club. I think there is such thing as the footy gods. And I'm not talking about spiritual footy gods. It's more about what you put in, you get out in this game. It's such a great leveller. Um, it's, a, it's a metaphor for life. How hard you work is what you usually get out of it. So to see him turn up like he had at Melbourne, he let all of his teammates down. It got them off to the wrong foot. He's a captain of a, of a club. And the, the sideshow that that was, that's the result that you get. So um, it's a bit too late this year, but he's going to turn 28 by round one next yeah. year and he needs a big pre-season because he's still got four, year four years left on that deal, which looks incredibly dicey at the moment. All right, to the Adelaide Oval now, the power. They're back in the top eight. It took until the last kick of the game, but they're now ahead on percentage into eighth. And it started today in the middle of the ground. Yeah, it did. It's unbelievable. There was 20 centre bounces today and Sydney did not win one hit out from the centre bounces. Port Adelaide won that stat 16-5 to five, and that gave them forward half dominant. So this ability to win the centre bounce and then lock it in your front half. Thought they were terrifically set up behind the ball and then they had some class in attack. Rosie's performance today is the number one ranked player on the ground. He kicked three goals from 20 disposals. He was outstanding. But Laddams and, and Ryder are playing their role and doing a good job. Does Lysa get back in now? Because he's been dropped. He left out for a second week now. How does he get back into this team? Well, he's not taking Peter Laddams' spot at the moment on what we've seen the last two weeks. So Paddy Ryder, I don't think, has nailed down that spot. So I think Lysa will play a role. But the two ruck setups at Port Adelaide with Laddams' ability to follow up, hunt the footy and win clearance as he had seven today, um, is giving him the nod over Scott Lysa at the moment. Now, Charlie Dixon's been dropped a couple of weeks ago. He's back in the side. Ollie Wines was only back in the team today as a, as a late inclusion. They were both pretty important today. The big story for me was uh, Charlie Dixon. I thought he competed right from the start. He didn't touch the ball in the first half last week against Essendon, just five disposals for the game. Pivotal moment just before half time when he took a contested mark inside 50. This one here, and then went back and slotted at Charlie Dixon. He got his game going from there. So if he can get going, so important. And they can cause some damage in the finals. I'm not sure you'd want to get them mm. in that first elimination final because this guy was back in form today, as you're seeing with this pretty special goal here. And as for Ollie Wines, a late inclusion for Zach Butters, who was injured, it was the right call to play him. In those conditions, play the captain, and he performed pretty well, Ollie Wines. All right, down to Geelong next. The Cats pretty much did what they needed to do after that uh, horror loss last week to the Dockers. Paddy Dangerfield, we think now on the afl.com.au Brownlow predictor, it's his sixth 
best on ground for the season. He was in everything tonight. He's our Saturday star. It's wide open, isn't it, the Brownlow medal race? So you wouldn't be surprised if he won it. But, you know, the names of Kelly and Neil and Bont and Pelly and these types are all in there, along with Dangerfield. So 33 tonight, seven clearances, 16 contested and a goal. This was pretty, uh, looks pretty dangerous at the time. He went off and spent a bit of time uh, on the bench over half time. Had his knee looked at again, you can see it strapped up there, but he did play out the game. Yeah, he was fine, Mitch. He was uh, no worries at all and came back Danger on and was again. the best man on the ground. So uh, a good performance after what's been by his standards probably a pretty quiet last uh, fortnight. Now I want to talk about one man, Quinton Narkel. He was last on the track over summer, lowest endurance base of any cat. He comes back into the side for the first time this season. His seventh AFL game now for Quinton Narkel. He was one of the X-Factors tonight. 21 touches, kicked a couple of goals in everything. He could loom as a, a bit of a wild card meeting into September. Not a bad time to come into the side when you come in at uh, round 21 to the top ranked side who was sitting on top of the ladder. Just just beautiful. And I was really impressed by this. He's more his, his ball use. So he went at 73% by foot tonight. And this kick here, that that's... That's pure class, like to put that ball in the space for Hawkins. So a couple of really nice kicks inside 50. He also had the six clearances, so he can get up the ground and win his own footy and then finish with class. So as I said, no one's knocking him out on the back of that performance. And uh, as you said, could be the X factor for the Cats who, let's be honest, in the last month have, have struggled a little bit to score. And they need some competition for spots. Now, Scott Thompson at the Roos announced his retirement during the week. He's going to play out the season. He copped enough, a couple of uh, head knocks on the night, so not the best night of the office for him, back down to his old stomping ground in Geelong. Yeah, look at this one. This is the first one, so he got a big egg on the head from uh, Kelly there. You can see it on the right side of his forehead, but this was the serious one, so he just taking the ground there and uh, hit his head pretty nastily, and the, the reaction there, you know, showing signs of concussion. So I think the North Melbourne docks did the right thing by ruling him out. He reportedly, listening to the coverage, wanted to come back on, but they ruled him out, and... Uh, he will have a chance to get back in in the last couple of weeks and, and get a good buy. Might play his farewell down in Tasmania. Now, it's up to the Gabba today. Pretty one-sided Q clash. The Lions, they've all but secured their spot now in the top four and pushing for that home qualifying final. They uh, made the, the sun their 16th straight loss this season. Yeah, and we've spoken about their dominance from the stoppages this year. I think they're the number one scoring side from that part of the ground, which is interesting. It's not usually the way that teams at this pointy end are structuring up. Usually the easiest way to score is off turnover and stoppage goals are a bonus, but they kicked 91 points from stoppages tonight against you know, a pretty ordinary Gold Coast sider. As you can see, it's a bit of a training drill here. And this man, Charlie Cameron, was electric six goals. Is that going to stand up in finals, the, the uh, stoppage game? Yeah, I don't think so. Not traditionally, it hasn't. So look, it's been a great year for them. If they make a prelim final, you know, from going from five wins last year to a prelim is outstanding. So. From now, uh, they should get second spot. Gives them a great chance to make a prelim. And I don't think they can win it. But uh, to get to that point would be an outstanding result. And Took Miller's been, uh, Took Miller and Dane Zorko have been the story of the Q clash. He went to Lockie Neal tonight. Zorko had 11 inside 50, so he was among everything. We turn to social media now. And Mel, there's nothing that gets people talking on social media more than a weather event like Friday night. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Social media went into meltdown over the snow uh, at the game on Friday night. People were almost more interested in the snow than the match itself, to be honest. Um, and Sean Burgoyne, he was one of the boys out there for the Hawks. 374 games, boys, and still finding a way to find a few firsts. He said, wow, well, I never thought I'd play a game of footy while it's snowing. Happy to tick that box. Now, boys, there was lots of chat throughout the week about the no sleeves policy that Clarko has. Um, so despite the forecast, we knew there was going to be some snow. He was adamant that none of his boys would be wearing the long sleeve. We posted uh, a poll on Twitter asking for your thoughts about his no sleeves policy. Boys, pretty, uh, pretty substantial here. 71% of fans think that the no-sleeves policy is pointless. I reckon Kane will be on the Clarko. You'll be on the Clarko band. Yeah, I, I like Clarko for how stubborn he's been with that. One of my old coaches, Mark Williams, hated it and didn't let the players wear them. So I'm a bit old school and I like the fact that he's stuck by that. Why, why? Is it a mental thing? Does it actually do anything or well, not? Well, it's it just Clarko being stubborn. It did on Friday night. It looked as though they were right inside the Giants' head. So I think they embraced the conditions better than the Giants. Not bad. And we did all see that vision of Clarko running shirtless to prove a point during the week as well. So he is very stubborn and sticking by it. Hey, another thing that caught my eye was Box Hill Hawks. They played in the VFL today. Uh, and most of them, despite the cold, were in the sleeveless jumper like Clarko would want. 
but one man broke the sleeveless jumper rule. Who do you think it was, boys? There he is. Oh. Jared oh, Roughhead he's got the himself. Double. Oh, he's got the double. I just thought it was pretty interesting. Make of it what you will, but, you know, he's trying to push his case for a farewell game, and he's the only one out of both teams that's mm. chosen to wear the long sleeve. Is sleeves. he trying to tip Clarko over the edge? Bit of an up yours to Clarko, I think. Do you reckon? Yeah, yep. Does he get played? Do you, honestly, uh, do you think he'll get a farewell game? I think he game? will, and I think he should, and I think he deserves it, and I hope he does. Well, here's Alistair Clarkson's take on that after the game last night. He knows he's had his, his time in the sun um, and, um, and that it's time for the next generation of players to come through. But um, having said that, there is sentiment in footy and um, if we get the opportunity to play him in the next one or two weeks, you know, like Mitch Lewis uh, hurt his shoulder a little bit, he got a bit of a stinger. If that doesn't pull up too well, then he might play next week. I reckon there's sentiment in this, but there's also a financial reason. If they choose to pick him. They'll have 40,000 at Marvel Stadium next week. There might be a 15,000 person swing at that ground. That'll do massive for the coffers at the Hawks. Yeah, I think they could do that. Or I'm sure if they you know, gave him a farewell of some sort, even if yeah. he wasn't playing, then the crowd would turn up regardless. But I just think it'd be a nice touch to send him off with his family there and his friends. He deserves that. They're going to win anyway. So yeah. the results are not an issue. And some players there didn't perform particularly well on Friday night. It's not as if they've all cemented their spot in stone. Yeah, they're just giants. They've played 181 games in their career. Eight seasons. It's their lowest score ever. Four goals, five, 29. They didn't kick a goal after half time. This is panic stations now, putting a line through them for the flag. No, I think so. You've got to finish top four to win the flag for me. I know the Bulldogs won from outside, but that's an anomaly. That hasn't been done. Some been done once in the new finals format. So uh, you're not winning it from outside the top four. I don't think the Giants on the back of this can make top four. So on that yeah. basis, you rule them out. And Leon Cameron out of coach at the end, out of contract at the end of next season. So. I mean, he's going to go into next year with a one-year contract and under serious amount of pressure. And I'm sure that the board of the Giants are wondering whether Leon is the man to try and get them their first flag. They've always raced on him around this time leading into the year out of contract. So there's no talk of that yet. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over summer. And if that goes into the first half of next year and they're not playing the way, it's going to be serious pressure. Yeah, pretty on rare for any club to go yeah, in with a now. contract a coach coming out of contract. We've seen Luke Beveridge being stitched up and Goodwin and, and Hinkley and Pike and all these over the journey. So him and Ross Lyon, uh, probably the coaches under the most pressure next year. All right, you can watch that game next week. The Giants, a massive clash against the Dogs on KO. KO lets you instantly stream over 50 live sports, including every match of every round of the 2019 Toyota AFL Premiership season. You can stream all of Sunday's matches with the Saints up against the Dockers, Richmond up against Carlton and West Coast hosting Adelaide. Plus you can catch up quickly on e or any of the action you miss with KO's key moments feature that makes it easy to skip to the best bits. Among those 50 other sports is the Moto GP. The Austrian Grand Prix is on tomorrow night, so can't wait for that. Plenty of other sport getting around with the Ashes in the next couple of weeks. Now, to the rest of those games, the Dockers, as I said, they can put some massive pressure on the top eight if they beat the Absolutely. Saints. Absolutely. No Dusty for Richmond, so Carlton outsiders, but uh, that will even things up a little bit. That'll be a great result for David Teague. And then West Coast, you would think, by how much against Adelaide at home. Okay, to the ladder as it sits right now. The Cats, they needed that win tonight to maintain their spot on top. West Coast are coming with a rush, but Richmond can jump back above Collingwood in the top four tomorrow. Yeah, and then there's the chasing sides. There it is, Adelaide, the Dogs, and also Fremantle just hoping for that eighth spot. Hawthorne's still a chance there, but right now it's Port Adelaide who have got it, and then the rest, North Melbourne lose tonight. Uh, aren't going to feature. It'd be interesting to see if Carlton can jump above Sydney if they happen to upset Richmond as well tomorrow. Yeah, it wouldn't have been the round so far if we didn't show your favourite thing of the season. Oh, Connor Rosie. Mm. Well, almost as good. Xavier Dersma, his arrows catching on. Didn't see it today at the Adelaide Oval, but we saw it during the week at a school visit. Yeah, and if anyone's been critical of this is our one more thing. This is what it's all about. They're at a school during the week and the kids are asking for it. They pull it out. How good is that? That's what it's all about. So if anyone's been critical of the Arrow this year, that's what it means to the kids as they're just going around the primary schools during the week. And Mel, it might have even got one of Kane's, you know, usual people that usually has a bit of a whack at him on social media on side. Yeah, you're not wrong. I noticed that Taylor Walker actually commented on that clip and he said that he loves it and that if the kids can get around uh, the personality and the goal celebration, then why do so many others find it so hard? So Agreeing you two on don't there often you agree. Oh, we do. We've got one. No, we're friends. That means that must mean we're friends, me and Tex. <laughs> Might see a coffee between you two during maybe, the week. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Don't, don't push your luck. No. <laughs> All right, we'll monitor social media for next week. Thanks, Kane. Thanks, Mel Horsey. Thank Thanks, you. Wentz. We'll see you same time, same place on the round so far next week.